Hey guys, how are you all well? Um, I'm on a slightly different job this morning. I got up really early to tackle a job that I've been putting off since Christmas. So, uh, the GS is continuing, we will catch up with that. I'm due to start the wiring on that, but I'm waiting for a friend who's gonna help me with it because he has also got a project on the go and he wishes to put one of these motor gadget M units on his bike as well. And as I've never used one before, and he has also never used one before, I sort of invited him over so we could uh, have a dabble with this and obviously get to know how it all works and how to wire it all up. So I will share that as promised. Uh, probably not all of it, it's, he's not too keen being on camera, but I'll catch as much as I can and update enough so you can see how it was all done and how we got on with it basically anyway back to the ktm so i made a decision that i'm going to sell the ktm uh, i've spent an awful lot of money on the equipment to keep the videos rolling like the cameras as you know i had to buy a new computer and yeah it's made quite a nasty dent in the pocket so i thought you know what i'm not using this thing with the plans i've got from now and through the rest of the year is summer that really doesn't come into it so i thought I'm going to get rid of it and try and sort of top the pot back up a bit from what I've spent on cameras, computers and so on. I've, you know, it's more important to keep the videos rolling, sharing the videos with you guys on YouTube than have a bike sat here doing nothing. So, over Christmas I decided to take it for an MOT. Got it all ready. I mean, the bike's always been fantastic. It's always started you know, a second on the button, it fires up. So I got all clobbered up, got my helmet on and everything, got it out the back gate, booked my slot at the MOT place. It wouldn't start. <laughs> oh no, this is just my luck. So I've done obvious things. Have I got the fuel on and all that business? Yes, but then fuel started spewing out the carb. Oh no, it's going from bad to worse. So obviously turn the fuel off. I phoned the MOT place up because I know how annoyed they get at people booking slots and not turning up. And yes, and rightly so, it is annoying because obviously they could have a customer in that slot who comes in and turns up and pays for the MOT and obviously keeps the work going through the day. Anyway, I called them and say, look, I've got a problem. I do apologize but I may not make it for my slot. I normally go a bit earlier and have a cup of tea with them. Uh, so I dragged the bike back in and pulled the carb off. And what I came across was quite shocking. I'd never ever seen anything like it. And I, I've messed about with a fair few bikes, not claiming to be any expert, but <laughs> I've stripped a few carbs out and cleaned them up and repaired them and stuff. I'd never seen anything like this one. The whole of the inside of the carb had gone bright green, like a residue over all the internal surfaces of the carb. It was unbelievable. Like I said, I've never seen anything like it. It was about the same color as that gas bottle you see there literally bright green I couldn't quite work it out so as I was in a rush to try and get up there for my time slot I quickly scrubbed it out uh, cleaned the um, the float valve because obviously that was sort of trapped open that's why the fuel was pouring out of it and this green stuff was accumulated in places that's why it was holding the float valve off. And as the carb was drying out, as the, obviously the, fu the fuel was evaporating, as I was trying to get it all out, 
this stuff was like turning to a, a dust, like a powder. Uh, I can only put it down to this fuel. This is E10. I do apologise, I've not really looked into it, but I've seen discussions going on on the, the interweb with people saying it's absolute rubbish and stuff. Is it something to do with the ethanol and things like that? I maybe should have researched this before I started this video, <laughs> but there you go. I wasn't actually going to record this, but I thought, hold on a minute, this may just help somebody who's got cars or bikes or whatever in storage, not realising what this stuff is actually doing to it. So I thought maybe this could save someone a monumental problem that I've got right now. So yeah, if you've got this fuel sat in anything, I'd probably suggest go and get it out of it pronto and drain the carb and everything and leave it with nothing in there because this has been a nightmare and it still is a nightmare. I haven't finished it yet. We'll have a closer look in a minute. So yeah, the hole inside of this car was bright green. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's not the fuel, but that's all I can think it could be. So I've got a, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, is this in shot? Yeah, it is. I've got it all stripped out and I'm gonna clean it all up and hopefully get this KTM running like it should run. So yeah, literally everything that fuel the fuel is in contact with is just turned bright green let's have a look obviously i cleaned the majority of it off when i've done that frantic quick clean out when i was going to the mot place but all the bowl everything you probably still see like the tint of it now but it is just absolutely covered you can see, probably see how bad that is. I do apologize for the focus. These GoPros ain't the best at close-ups, I'm afraid. But you can probably see how bad that bit is. But the whole of the inside of the carb was like that. And it's just blocked everything up. I've started cleaning these bits, look, they're all done. I've blown them out with the airline, brushed them out and such. So they're all sorted. I've got to do this, the little jet. As you can see, that is gone that terrible green. And it's building up so much, it starts breaking loose and like I say, clogs everything up. I've just never seen anything like it. You could probably see the remnants in here. This whole thing was bright green. You could probably just, like I say, see a, a tint of it now all over it, which I'm gonna scrub out. If we look in the very bottom of it there, you can see where it's thick and accumulating right down in that round bit there. And it's all over the tube, look. So we're gonna get all that scrubbed out, get it all gone. I've got my little pot here, that's just a panel wipe in there and it seems to be loosening it all up nicely and getting it off. But everything, let's get the, the floats. Like I say, I had to clean this out very, very quickly and shoved it back on just to get the thing up to the MOT place. As you can see it on there. this bit still see it on there a bit yeah it's quite strange like I say I've never seen anything like it I know stuff can discolour in carburetors I get that but never ever seen it go bright green that, that's that's good compared to what it looked like when I first got the carb off. But today, well this morning, I'm gonna take care of everything and get it all off properly. So like I say, it's sort of breaking off 
and it's all obviously going round in the fuel and blocking the carb up. And it just makes you wonder what it's actually doing to the inside of your engine as well, doesn't it? Yeah, so I'm going to go through all this. I'm going to give the bike a good clean. Uh, all the external part of the carb all needs cleaning as well. It's a bit mucky. So I'm going to get it all nice and presentable and hopefully running how it should be running. So I can only suggest, you know, from the experience I'm having here, if you've got anything stood in your garages, your sheds or whatever, with fuel sat in it from last summer, you might be in a spot of trouble. I don't know. All I can suggest is perhaps go and drain the fuel out of it and get it all out the carb, especially if you've got a four cylinder bike, because you're gonna have four times this problem that I've got here with one carb, and it's just gonna be a complete headache for you. I could be wrong, it may not be the fuel that's done it. I do not know, I really don't, because like I say, I've never seen it before. I don't know too much about this issue with the fuel, the ethanol and all that business. I've not really looked into it. So I could be wrong, but I can't see it being anything else, really. Who knows? So anyway, I'm gonna get on and scrub all this clean get all the jets clean out and blown out with the airline and everything and hopefully this thing's going to run right i'm also going to drain the fuel out of that tank i did drain it out that day when i was trying to get to the mot place and put new fuel in but i'm going to drain it again go to the petrol station this morning and put totally fresh fuel in it again so hopefully the bike will sell and they'll be using the fuel in it anyway and constantly, so yeah, replacing the fuel. Anyway, let's get this cleaned up and get rid of all this green gunge. Right, I'm gonna start with uh, this bit first, see if we can get all that out. Yeah, I'll say it does, it does come off easy. Which is actually a bad thing because it's going to come off easy while your bike's running and eventually block everything up like it's done with this. It's a good thing when you come to clean it out. Yeah, it does come off easy. Yeah, it'd be an absolute nightmare with four carbs. Still a big clump of it in there. I wish you can see that right down the bottom. See that shaded part there? It's a big clump of it all congealed into the bottom. Keep soaking it, it'll get there. Yeah, as you can see, it's all starting to run out in here now. That's better. Right, moving forward a bit. I just got on with that, so I wanted it done. That's all back together. I spent quite a bit of time cleaning absolutely everything inside and out. So what I'm gonna do now, I've just been out. I've actually got some fresh fuel. So I'm gonna empty everything that out that's in the tank and also some new pipe because all this lot is yeah seen better days and it has been touching the exhaust pipe and it's all melted so i've got some fresh stuff to replace all that with and what i'm going to do before i put the carb on i'm going to clean parts of the bike i'm going to pop the exhaust back off give that a good clean up because uh, he had a load of mud baked onto it. So I might as well sort that out while I'm doing it now. 
get it looking presentable and then yeah i'm gonna advertise it sort of saddish that uh, i'm getting rid of it but you know can't do everything i guess i'd love to keep it because it actually is quite a rare bike with the 520 you know you try and find a 520 there's not many about at all loads of 525s but the 520 very very rare you see them come up for sale and uh, a good example of one is i think the last one i've seen went over three thousand pounds i'm not saying that is worth that although it's 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 clean it's tidy but uh, that's probably more in the region of two and a half, to be fair. But I'd say it's sort of in that area of probably not going down in value anymore. More than likely going up in value, to be honest. Because, like I say, you just don't see the 520s available. can't get these damn things apart on the little bits that holds them together I think they're glued on these little black bits it ain't coming out of them at all I reckon they're bonded on uh. They've got to be bonded on there. Stuck solid. That's ridiculous. It took me a while to put that car back together. There's that many little individual parts on it. And then, to be honest, I got a bit lost with it. With the springs. So then... I had a look through the Haynes book of fairy tales and it's a completely different carburetor covered in there. <laughs> so that's sort of get on with it. We got there in the end though. It says it covers this 520, but certainly not in detail. Oh, that one's come loose. Re. I wonder why these are stuck. That, someone's glued them. Definitely. I will strap them up another way. They've been glued on. 100% they have. Never mind. Anyway. Nice fresh bit of pipe. on that's me off cut Got a stranger in here. <laughs> Hello. Is this? <laughs> Hello, mate. <laughs> Good lad. You decided to wake up, have you? <laughs> hey? 
You decided to wake up. Good boy. <laughs> you crazy dog. Right. Bit of a clean up now, I think. Not the shed, the bike. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm gonna take the exhaust off. Give that a bit of a quick polish, not like mirror polish or anything like that, just brighten it up. So like I say a load of dirt was on the front and it's uh baked on there. So I'm gonna clean all that off just to make it a bit more presentable. And say the the bike's got brand new tires on. These tyres have done 14 mile <laughs> since I put them on. So I had new chain and sprocket, uh, new brake pads back and front. Everything it needed really, I'd done. So whoever buys it, it's literally ready to go. Or, like I say, it's sort of in that area possibly going up in value because as i said earlier you just you cannot find these 520s ktm 520 they're just non-existent anyway i'm sure someone will enjoy it and get the use out of it or put it in a collection they're pretty rough who said stainless can't rust? <laughs> They're quite bad, aren't they? Pretty rubbish. We'll buff them up. We'll get them a bit tidier than that. They look absolutely terrible. But at the end of the day, they had all mud sat on there baking on, which hasn't done it any favours at all. Plus, obviously, we've been exhaust with the heat and everything. Can sort of corrode the surface but you know, I'll get them better than that as soon as I get a scale on them with the heat off the engine they can rust obviously you get to very expensive exhaust that won't do it to quite as bad as that but I believe this is the standard one that's been on the bike since now Right, let's sort that out. Right, moving on a bit, I've got the exhaust sorted, that's all as good as it's going to be. Uh, I've been cleaning bits up on the bike while I can get at them while it's sort of in bits. So it may not look fantastic, but it is loads better because there's just dirt, like mud, dried out mud, absolutely caked everywhere. So I've got all that out, I scraped it all out, give it a wash down. So I've cleaned the chain as well, that's all sorted. I've took all the air box apart because that was the worst bit. It just accumulates in there and without stripping the bike, you can't actually get to it. So all that's in bits, but I'm gonna risk taking it down the house and doing it in the sink with some soapy water. I think if I take one bit down and sort of break it in steady, I think I'll get away with it. Should do. So if I take the smallest bit, which is this, 
if I take that down and say, oh, I'm just going to give this a wash. Oops, something's fell off it. <laughs> I think I'll get away with that. And then just uh, slowly well, filter the rest of it down the house and wash it all in the sink. I say, a bit of, bit of warm soapy water and that'll all come up really good. It'd be nice to get it all back in one piece. And fire it up, see if it starts okay. I've had the throttle all apart because that was uh, playing up but the carbs back on yeah so this this throttle i bought that new and it's never been right always seems sticky so i found the old one out and built a good one out of the two now it's all nice and free so i'm happy with that it's all working well down there so yeah I'm gonna go and wash all this and get the back end back on it. I'll be back when it's all clean. See if I get told off. <laughs> right, got away with it, all clean. They're much better. All right, all that's ready to go back on. So, like I say, I'm gonna give it a final wash over when it's all together. At least I've got into all the bits that uh, you can't get into when the bike's in one piece. Uh, it's looking much better now. Obviously, it, it's never going to be perfect without a full-on stripped-down powder coat frame and all that business. But I'd, don't get me wrong, I'd love to do that with it, but it, it, it's just got to go, I'm afraid. I'm a, I'm a little bit gutted because I really like it. But needs must and all that. We've all done stuff like that. You know, someone has to go to move along, if you know what I mean. So I think I'm going to call it a day on this and get up early again tomorrow and uh, put it back together. And fingers crossed, it starts up, runs great, and it's all back to how it were. <laughs> Let's see, the... Uh, the carb was a complete mess. I've never seen anything like it. As I said earlier, it was literally the same green as that gas bottle. Quite strange. I'm sure some of you guys will say it's that fuel. And like I say, I don't know much about all that. I've not really dipped into it. I've seen discussions on it, how it's affecting vehicles and stuff. But that, like I say, that fuel had been in there for four or five months without the bike running you know things were going on and it just I, I just didn't start it didn't use it or nothing so yeah four or five months and it had gone like that which is quite bad really isn't it quite bad anyway hopefully it's all sorted now so when i give it its final clean it will be I don't know, I might put it on Marketplace, I might put it on eBay, we'll see what's what. Mind you, eBay fees are a bit strong, aren't they? So I might see how it goes on Marketplace. I think the ones I have seen, like I say, I've seen absolutely stunning condition ones, over 3,000. So I reckon this has got to be two and a half. It really has. And with that money, we can move on a bit and do a few more plans anyway i'm going to call it a day on this one uh there'll be another video on the gs possibly tomorrow i say we're sort of wiring out with a friend but i will give plenty of detailed updates on that to show you how it's all gone and what i've done and everything like that so it's all progressing which is the main thing anyway Cheers for watching guys, take care.